As we approach the times of the Great Tribulation, the Book of Revelation, which greatly prophesies of this time, is a book that requires great study. We are fast approaching a time that the world has never experienced before. And as believers, understanding the Book of Revelation helps us greatly navigate during this time, where the world seeks to distract us and keep us unfocused. In many of my videos, I state that we should live with the end in mind. And there is no other book of prophecy in the Bible that contains more details about the end than the book of Revelation. In the first part of this series, we started with chapters 1 through 3, which showed the Apostle John being caught up and shown these visions that he was charged to write about. Part 1 contained Yahshua's message to the seven churches. These are all vital messages that us as believers should consistently read and make sure we don't make many of the mistakes that are found upon some of the churches that he spoke to in the two chapters. Today, in this present time, many believers run a huge risk of being of the church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church, because they want to mix their belief in God with their belief and trust in the world. It won't work. We must be set apart. Be set apart from this world. In part two, we discuss chapters four through six, which contains some beautiful imagery of heaven in chapters four and five. And in chapter six, we see what we call the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the opening of the first six seals. In this, we see what happens during the beginning of the great tribulation, and it is not good. In part three, we discuss chapters seven through nine. We discuss the 144,000 that were sealed from the 12 tribes of Israel. And then in chapters eight and nine, we saw the seventh seal opened which brought along the seven trumpet judgments. This included wildfires, stars falling from heaven, locusts tormenting all men on the earth not sealed, very bad judgments. In part four, we discussed chapters 10 through 12. In these chapters, we saw the sixth trumpet, John's vision of a temple in heaven, and we saw the two witnesses that prophesied for 1260 days, or three and a half years. We saw the Antichrist kill the witnesses when he was allowed, not before. We also discussed the Revelation 12 sign. In the last part, part 5, we discussed chapter 13 by itself because it contained so many prophetic pieces that spoke of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the mark of the beast. In that video, we covered all those topics specifically. There is such a great deal of prophecy in those 13 chapters. I encourage you to go back and read those chapters on your own. We will now continue on in this prophetic book and understand what our Father wants us to know. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 14 Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps, they sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to Elohim and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of Elohim. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to prepare those who dwell on the earth. To every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Elohim and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who had made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. And another followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. 
who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahshua. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the master from now on. Yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of Elohim. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress, up to the horse's bridles, for 1,600 furlongs. Okay, so there's a lot to discuss. Revelation chapter 14 begins with the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his Father's name written on their foreheads. In interpreting the book of Revelation, you must locate the scene of the activity before you begin the interpretation. Chapter 14 is a good illustration of this point. Many Bible scholars consider this to be a scene in heaven, and others believe it as a scene taking place on earth. As you can imagine, the difference in these viewpoints will seriously affect one's interpretation. I believe what is being discussed in chapter 14 is taking place in heaven during the middle of the tribulation period. I believe it is this time because if you remember from part 3, the seventh seal judgment at the end of the first quarter of the tribulation opens up into the seven trumpet judgment in chapters 8 and 9. Chapters 12 and 13 describe events that happen in the middle of the tribulation. In the next chapters, we will begin the bowl judgments that come out of the seventh trumpet, covering the last half of the Great Tribulation. So in this chapter, chapter 14, we look at the disruption that will take place at the end of the first three and a half year period, the beginning of the Great Tribulation. So first thing I would like to discuss is the 144,000. Now from reading, many of us like to assume that this 144,000 are the same that is spoken about in chapter 7. But the characteristics of this 144,000 are definitely different. People want to believe that they are the same because obviously both groups total 144,000 and both groups have something written on their foreheads. But the differences should also be highlighted. The Revelation 7 group is specifically Israelites, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Revelation 14 group comes from the earth or from among men. The scene of chapter 7 occurs on earth. Chapter 14 takes place in heaven. The additional qualifications for being a member of this group in chapter 14, as seen in verses 4 and 5, are not recorded in chapter 7. And the 144,000 of chapter 7 are servants of our Elohim. The 144,000 of chapter 14 are people purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to Elohim and the Lamb. Meaning, this election was not from the spreading of the gospel on earth during the Great Tribulation, but for a special position at the throne of Elohim before him and Yahshua. Since there are only two similarities, but there are several differences between these two groups, we can safely conclude that they are not the same. We are not concretely given who the 144,000 are, except that their qualifications are that they were extremely devoted to Yahshua. But this is not something that I will put emphasis on. I mean, I could be wrong. This could be the same 144,000 from chapter 7. We are not given enough information to concretely know for sure. The 144,000 sing a new song of worship and redemption. The four beasts and elders are the same as in chapter 4. They follow the lamb and reign with him. A characteristic of them 
also is that they are without deceit or fault. Without fault doesn't mean that they are sinless, but they are sanctified. What I take from the beginning of this chapter is how I want to be seen in the eyes of our Father. I want to be one that follows the Lamb wherever He goes. And in my mouth, I do not want there to be any deceit found. And I want to be found without fault, to be sanctified. As we keep reading, verse 6 introduces the first of five angels who deliver a special message concerning the middle of the Great Tribulation period. When you think about it, it is really remarkable that an angel is commissioned to go forth preaching the everlasting gospel, because the preaching of the gospel has not been committed to angels, but to human beings. Being that this is the case, it can only be an indication of the severity of the circumstances during that time. One angel warning the people to fear Elohim instead of the Antichrist, and to give glory to Elohim instead of the Antichrist, and he will instruct them how to do it. Another angel stating that Babylon has fallen. We will talk about Babylon in the next video. A third angel confirming the severity of what happens when you take the mark of the beast saying, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim. Another angel proclaiming that the harvest of the earth is ripe, that the ungodly people of the world are ready to be gathered up and judged. Verse 14 through 16 show that the time is right, and the judge of all the earth is to harvest both the good and the bad. The chapter ends from verses 17 through 20, which symbolize the wrath of Elohim as a grape harvest with the treading of the grape clusters in an immense wine press. The sickle depicts judgment. The clusters of the vine of the earth represent the unbelievers of the earth, those who have followed and worshiped the beast. When verse 18 says, her grapes are fully ripe, it is saying that the time for Elohim's judgment of the earth is now. The great wine press of the wrath of Elohim pictures the violence and intensity of God's coming judgment on the earth. The amount of blood that results from the wine press emphasizes the severity of the judgment. A thousand and six hundred furlongs are two hundred miles. Judgment is upon all men and women who disregarded the son of Elohim and chose to follow after the beast. Our father is truly wonderful. He has given us his word and prophecy to tell us what we should expect. We must listen to him. Let's continue. Revelation chapter 15. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of Elohim is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of Elohim, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Elohim, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Yahweh El Shaddai. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Yahweh, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of Elohim who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of Elohim and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Revelation chapter 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of Elohim on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who had worshipped his image. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Yahweh, the one who is and who was 
and who is to be. Because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And you have given them blood to drink. For it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Yahweh El Shaddai, true and righteous are your judgments. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with the great heat, and they blasphemed the name of Elohim, who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the Elohim of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and his water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of Yahweh, the Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises, and thunderings, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before Elohim, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed Elohim because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Okay, so these are some serious events. Revelation chapter 15 begins the preparation for the last seven bowls. The wrath of Elohim began with the seven seals found in chapter 6. Then the seven trumpets starting in chapter 8. And his wrath will be finished with the last seven bowls. 777. Chapters 15 and 16 are an introduction to the last seven and final plagues on mankind. In these chapters, we see the final outpouring of God's wrath before Yahshua's return. That wrath is shown by the effects of the seventh trumpet, which was opened in chapter 11, which is very short. It begins the introduction to those last seven bowl judgments. Chapter 15 pretty much sets the stage for what we see in chapter 16. The last seven bowl judgments occur during the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. The King James and other versions call them vials. Vials are shallow bowls used for pouring. The bowls are full of the wrath of God. This is the wrath of God on sinful mankind for rejecting his son, the Adun Yahshua the Messiah. Chapter 15 is an account of the seven angels preparing to administer the last seven great tribulation judgments of Messiah. Revelation chapter 16 describes the final seven vials of the wrath of Elohim. This represents the climax of God's punishment of sinners during the tribulation period. It's important to note that no repentance is invited or shown. So if you do not make the right decision, it seems like you're finished. The bold judgments seem to affect people more directly than did the trumpet judgments. The first bold judgment is a foul and loathsome sore. When men choose to worship the Antichrist rather than Yahshua, they are demonstrating their allegiance by accepting the mark of the beast. So after the world has accepted the mark of the beast, Elohim responds by sending on them a plague of noisome and grievous sores. John makes it clear that these awful sores afflict only those who worship the Antichrist and who have accepted the mark of the beast. No tribulation saint suffers from them. The second bold judgment is that the sea became as the blood of a dead man. The second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it turns into blood like that of a dead man, 
and every living thing in the sea dies. We see this happen in chapter 8 with the second trumpet judgment, but it only affected a third of the living sea creatures. This judgment kills every living thing in the sea. The third bull judgment is poured out upon the rivers. Elohim will destroy the only remaining sources of water, the rivers and fountains, or springs of the deep, by letting them turn to blood. Fresh water, already in short supply because of the prolonged drought. If you remember in chapter 11, the two witnesses turned water into blood also. The worshippers of Antichrist will have no clean water with which to wash the sores. The fourth bowl judgment, scorched men with fire. Their mouths already parched from lack of water. Those who are unrepentant suffer even more intense thirst when Elohim causes the sun to scorch them with fire. The sun that normally provides light, warmth, and energy will become a deadly killer. With no fresh water to drink, the world's inhabitants will face extreme heat. The fifth bowl judgment is darkness. The Antichrist kingdom is full of darkness. This refers to either the Antichrist's actual throne or his capital city, but extends to all his dominion. Regardless of where darkness begins, it eventually covers his entire kingdom. This same phenomenon occurred in Egypt during the plagues. The whole land was consumed in darkness, so oppressive that Moses said you could actually feel it. That's the sort of thing that will come upon the kingdom of the Antichrist during this time. This divine judgment will give a physical illustration of this spiritual darkness. The sixth bowl judgment, the Euphrates dried up. The sixth bowl judgment comes in two parts. One, the drying up of the Euphrates River, which will be the preparation for the battle of the great day of Elohim. And two, the tremendous demon forces that will bring the rebellious armies of the world to the valley of Megiddo for the purpose of opposing Elohim. And this is the time where we see the battle of Armageddon. The Bible says that at the end, the devil will have power enough to call down fire from heaven. His miracles will be so convincing that people will believe a lie. This is deception to the utmost. These evil spirits are so deceiving that they convince these armies to come to the battle of Armageddon, believing they will win. This battle is actually the forces of evil coming against Elohim himself. This war has actually been going on for centuries, and this event is the culmination of it all. The seventh bull judgment is the wrath of God. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. The quake was tremendous. The seventh bull produces the destruction of Babylon, the great city. The statement, it is done, in verse 17, shows that with this vial and the return of Messiah himself, the judgments are now finished. The saddest thing is that the unbelieving mankind still blasphemes Elohim and has no opportunity for repentance. The seventh vial is the last of the seven plagues, and it completes both the seventh trumpet judgments and the seventh seal. And this is the wrath of Elohim, a time period that man has never experienced. Today, the rulers of the world are creating the narrative to explain these events through their discussions of climate change and the sustainable development goals. But this is a time of great tribulation. And before we wrap it up, let's review the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. This is the wrath of God. The first seal, found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. The white horse, the conqueror. The second seal, found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. The red horse. It brings conflict and death. The third seal, found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. The black horse. Scarcity on earth. Food will not be easy to come by. The fourth seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. The pale horse. Widespread death on earth. A fourth of the world population will perish. The fifth seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. The cry of the martyrs. The souls who have been slain for the word of Elohim are impatient for Yahweh to avenge their blood and judge all those who are not among his redeemed. The sixth seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. Cosmic disturbances. A great earthquake and stars from heaven fell to the earth. The great men of the earth went underground and in the mountains, hiding in their bunkers. The seventh seal, 
Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. Silence in heaven and beginning of the trumpet judgments. The first trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. Hail and fire mingled with blood, and a third of the earth burned up. All green gas burned up. The second trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 through 9. Something like a great mountain burning with fire, cast into the sea. A third of the sea becomes blood. A third of the living creatures of the sea die. A third of the ships are destroyed. The third trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 through 12. Wormwood, a great star from heaven, burning like a torch, falls upon a third of the rivers and springs of water. A third of the waters are made bitter, and a third of the men die from the waters. The fourth trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verse 12. A third of the sun, moon, and stars are struck and darkened, so a third of the day and night wouldn't shine. The fifth trumpet, Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. The first woe, locusts like horses prepared for battle. A star from heaven was given the key to the bottomless pit, and it was opened. Locusts came up, stung men that don't have the seal of the living God on their foreheads for five months. The sixth trumpet, Revelation chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. The second woe, four angels bound at the Euphrates River are released to kill a third of mankind. The seventh trumpet, Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. The third woe, the temple of God in heaven is opened and there are flashes of lightning, peals of thunder, and a great hailstorm. The first bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. Horrible sores on the ones that have the mark of the beast and worship his image. The second bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. The sea became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. The third bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verse 4. The rivers and the springs of water became blood. The fourth bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verses 8 through 9. The sun was given the power to scorch men with fire. The fifth bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verse 10 through 11. The Antichrist kingdom becomes darkened and the people gnawed their tongues because of their pain. The sixth bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verses 12 through 14. The Euphrates River dries up so that the way could be prepared for the kings of the east. Unclean spirits like frogs come out of the dragon, beast, and false prophet to perform signs to gather the kings of the world for the war of the great day of God Almighty. The seventh bowl, Revelation chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. The voice out of the temple said, It is done. Lightning, thunder, a great earthquake, the city is split into three parts. Hailstone came down on men who blasphemed God. And these are the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls of wrath that make up the wrath of Elohim. I'll put this chart on my website so it's something that you can always refer back to. The link is in the description box. This is a part of the understanding you must have when you start living with the end in mind. When you have this understanding, when you see certain things in the news, when you see agendas and narratives that the global media are pushing, you will understand it a little better now. You have a better understanding of the future, and for anyone with common sense, you know you do not want to be around for any of it. The devil's wrath is something. He is an adversary that has murdered and killed, deceived, plot, and done very horrible acts in order to further his agenda of being like the Most High. But even on his best day, he cannot compare to the Most High, and it is his wrath we do not want to be affected by. He has given us many chances to surrender to him, to see the error in our ways and come back to him. His grace is available to all men and women. This is a free gift and I plead with you to accept it fully. Don't live with one foot in and one foot out. He does not accept this. Do not know and believe in him, but choose to live the way you see fit. You are literally living in the time where Bible prophecy is jumping off the pages and becoming a reality. What is your decision? Who and what are you living for? It's time to repent and follow our master and savior as he is the only way of redemption and being free of Elohim's wrath. 
For Elohim did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our master Yahshua the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Make the decision today to serve him before it's too late. The time is ticking away. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I would really like to give a special thank you to those who have donated and contributed to this ministry. Your contribution and support are a huge blessing to this ministry and give me the strength to continue. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. I am humbled by your support and I am very thankful for you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.